It's 3.15, and that means it's time for... The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. That's right. Welcome once again to The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. I'm your host, Bill McNeil, and you're probably wondering exactly what is The Real Deal today. Hey, good question. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and not all that long ago, Perch actually came here on the channel. We had a discussion, you know, with... With all the upheaval and the reorganization and the, the downsizing going on at D Disney and Warner Media at the time due to the, due to the losses from the ongoing pandemic, how were they going to affect Marvel and DC? We've been waiting kind of for a while now for the you know the other shoe to drop for Marvel as we've seen uh, you know all the cuts at DC beginning with their parks you know moving over to ESPN their movie divisions we we've seen a you know a, a couple of, of layoffs at Marvel but. When we talked about DC, you know, I was like, hey, we know they had the cuts in July, but they just did another round of restructuring. They said they need to cut 20% of costs as far as Warner Media, the, the media entity within AT&T. Going forward, I was like, they have to cut some people, right? And uh, Pertrude said he didn't think they really could because in July, they they lost 14 individuals. They, they cut 14 people from their staff. And reportedly, that was one third of all of DC staff. So, you know, you do the math in your head, and you're like, well, there's only 28 people left on the staff. So there really just wasn't much more fat to trim that it would likely, if they were going to lose costs, it would likely be trimming down the line, producing less comics, uh, page rates decreasing, which we have heard that's actually going to be happening on DC. And there will be a video right here on the channel talking about that on Saturday. I got Joe Corallo, award-winning comic book editor, writer, coming on. We're going to discuss that. But it turns out, uh, while Perch is, is normally a very good prognosticator of these things, he was wrong. DC Comics announced today they are laying off. We got the names of seven more senior staff members, including the co-EIC, after they just just named Marie Javins to the full-time EIC position. The, the woman that was the co-EIC, Michelle Wells, is one of the per people being laid off. Obviously, that was strategically placed out there to, to, to be some good news as all this bad news kind of uh, came up right behind it. So Perch didn't think there was any more fat to trim. Turned out there was. There, so if you put these number in there with the original 24 or 14, you know, we add, the, add these nine. The seven that we have, and there's two not named. You know, that goes up to 20, 23 people and, and over half of the staff being laid off since the – the layoffs begin in July. Now, before I can get all the details on who these people that were, were that are that were laid off, I do want to say if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you will get all the latest breaking news, comic book reviews, opinions right here on Thinking Critical YouTube. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't. Either way, I definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this latest round of layoffs at DC Comics? You know, as far as, as far as the Warner Media restructuring that's going on, did you see it coming? I, I kind of thought they would have to cut some more fat. Obviously, Perch, um, he didn't think there was there was much more to, to take out, but obviously that did happen. So, are what do you think is the future for DC Comics? Is this is this the beginning of the end? I think it is DC moving to a new vision, and I'll, and I'll tell you why here uh, very shortly. But let's kind of get into the details of who these people are that were laid off in this round. Like I said, we have seven names now, according to the article, which this is a rumor article in Bleeding Cool. When they have announced these details in the past, they've normally been correct, so that's why I'm running with it here. There will be a link in the video description if you want to read the entire uh, write-up from Bleeding Cool yourself. Uh, Adam Phillips, the director of marketing services at DC Comics, uh, 26 years working at DC Comics. Think about the amount of knowledge, just corporate knowledge being lost as far as the comic book industry and DC Comics. Stuart Shrek, sales manager, DC Comics, 21 years at the publisher. Fletcher Chu, uh, Chu Fong, events director at DC Comics, 18 years at the, at the publisher. I don't know about you guys, that is enormous. That is 65 years of knowledge, not just in the comic book industry, within DC Comics itself. That tells me that DC is going in a vastly new direction. They don't need the old guard. They don't need the old way of thinking about the, what the comic book industry is. They are going in a new direction. And it makes sense. They've been kind of, um, they had pushed digital in the past. But as soon as the pandemic happened, they went and, and took a lot of the stories that were going to be original stories in their, their big uh, 
80 page giants and they made those DC digital first. So there'd be new product on the market. And we've seen a sustained effort to get out new digital DC digital first material. We've had um, deceased one of the most pro uh, popular franchises at DC comics right now, Witten did a DC digital first um, a publication. They, they left money on the table to put that out there and try and draw people in to their uh, DC digital first line. We had a new uh, volume of Injustice. Obviously, that was from Tom Taylor as well. We've seen uh, Harley black, white, and red. And I imagine we're going to see a lot more of the bigger name uh, characters being put out as, as DG, DC Digital First. Also, we know that there, there's a sustained effort for DC Comics to move into the YA graphic novel portion of the sector. Now, if you just look at the overall numbers, the sales of the comic book industry are up. And you'll hear a lot of comic pros, uh, most notably, um, who was it? Tim Seeley. He likes to put it in people or customers' faces or critics' faces. What, the industry's growing. Another one is Jamal Eigel. He likes to do it a lot. But if you go in and dig into the numbers, it's quite clear that the actual periodic comics, the, the superhero capes types comics that Marvel and DC are part of, image, and basically what we cover here on the channel, that sector is actually shrinking year over year it is still shrinking and where the growth is being experienced is actually not in the direct market direct comic book market it is being experienced in the book publishing market you know your your uh, barnes and noble your, your bookstores and things like that where they have enormous sections of manga if you go into a comic book or not a comic book but a bookstore and you go to the graphic novel section the manga section you will notice that the manga section tends to be two to three times bigger than the graphic novel section because that's what's selling, that's where the growth is. The other place that there is growth is in the kids' graphic novels. You know, your Smile, Dogman, uh, Rene Telgemeier, Dad Pilkey kind of sector, you know, Captain Underpants, stuff like that, but also in the YA graphic novel sector. And DC Comics has been pushing this very hard. They brought in a lot of YA authors that, that write these type of material, the, you know, uh, I can't remember all the names of them, but they're there and they're honestly putting more emphasis on there. And I think they are trying to grow their um, their business to to expand. I don't know. I don't. I do think the plan is to eventually to kind of just uh, not completely abandon the direct comic book market, but to kind of it's going to be just a tertiary business. And their primary business is going to be they're focusing on digital and these YA and kids graphic novels. And I think that's why we're seeing. You know, 65 years of business walk out the door at this uh, this um, round of layoffs because they do not fit in with the future uh, vision of DC Comics. Also out the door are Sandy Yee, Senior Vice President, Global Franchise Management, over nine years at DC and Warner. Uh, Lisette uh, Ostolo, Vice President, Digital Marketing and Events, seven years at DC Comics, 13 years at Warner Brothers Online. Michelle R. Williams, this one is pretty surprising a lot of people were wondering well with marie javins being elevated to that full-time eic position what happens to michelle wells who was the co-eic after bob harris exited the company after he was essentially fired and shown the door well she is being let go obviously um, she had four years as a publisher she also was an executive editor at disney uh, you know a lot of um years in the business also i, I found her exiting a little bit puzzling because she was also an acquisition editor at McGraw Hole and Penguin Random House. Obviously, they work specifically in the market that it appears that DC wants to target for growth as far as their business goes and to grow their portfolio and, and, and grow their revenues. So it would have seemed like she would have been a key person in that, obviously, um, maybe because she was a co-EIC, maybe they were giving Michelle Wells and Marie Javins both, uh, you know, let's see how they go in it, and we'll pick a winner, and the other one has to go because you, you, they didn't want to demote them. Not really sure. The only group editor we lose is Alex Carr, who was the DC Comics Justice League editor, um, was only at the at DC for two years. So obviously, we got a lot of editorial layoffs in the last round. Perch mentioned specifically, there really isn't much left to, to lose as far as the editorial staff. We do lose one editor. Editor. Most of these layoffs are senior staff. There are two that we are not sure who they are. The reports are that there are nine people in total uh, got their walking papers today. These are seven of them. There means uh, two more uh, outstanding. Maybe they're from editorial. 
I imagine not, but you never know. We didn't. I thought this would happen, but not to this scale. I thought they would have to lose three or four more people uh, as they were cutting costs. So not good news, certainly for not for DC Comics fans. If you're a fan of, you know, um, you know, periodic comics, you know, your floppies, your, your weekly comics, you know, your, your Superman, Batman, Aquaman, Flash, Justice League type titles. It's quite apparent to me that there is less emphasis on that. We've already heard the rumors that they no longer want to push those titles using big names, i.e. expensive creators, that they, they want to cut costs by, by putting lesser known creators on those works, specifically writers, and pushing them that way. You know, why are we paying Tom King or, or Brian Michael Bendis or Scott Snyder all this money? You know, let's bring in some, some newer talent as um, maybe they don't quite have the track record of success that some of those uh, more expensive creators have, and we'll push them on the Batman books. I imagine James Tynan, while he is very hot right now, he's got a, a hit book over at uh, Image, he's got a hit book of Boom, he's got a hit book over here at, at DC, obviously with Batman. I bet he's uh, substantially cheaper than a Scott Snyder or a Tom King or a Brian Michael Bendis at this point. Now, how will he remain cheaper? I don't think so. I think his, he's going to be pricing himself out of DC's uh, part, you know, relatively soon if they stick with this strategy. So um, I don't know. As as a comic book reader, as an avid comic book reader that you know reads, you know, the floppy comics, single issues, periodic comics every single week, I find this very distressing. It is not. Um, it's not the news that I wanted. It's something that I somewhat expected. Um, like I said, Perch and I kind of disagreed on this. I don't think that they'll be able to cut any more positions. Now, if they do, I think they'll have to bring in new people into the positions that are probably a lot cheaper. You're talking about someone that's been with DC Comics at 26 years. I imagine over that period of time with that kind of seniority, you know, the price tag goes up and, you know, you're, you're, your compensation package is, is a lot better than when you started. So maybe they're just going to be bringing new people in. We saw some of the marketing people get cut out. I'm not surprised with that because Daniel Cherry the third, the new DC Comics general manager, is by all accounts a marketing whiz. He is he is a marketing genius. So he probably those positions probably were made redundant. And a lot of these positions that we just lost lost probably are due to redundancy when they did restructuring at Warner Media. I imagine there will be a little bit more corporate oversight, maybe a little bit more corporate input into what specifically DC Comics has been doing. You know, we, we know Dan Didio, he liked to, to think outside the box and go against like the core uh, group of, of what is for the core characters and pushing just along with Bruce Wayne, Batman and stuff like that you know, 5G generation five, which is now future state was all, that's his baby. And it was all introducing all these new heroes and kind of going away from the old guard. Now Warner brothers has a vested interest in Superman, Batman, Flash, Aquaman, you know, they, they want to put them out in movies. They want to put them out on HBO max. They want to put them out on animated movies. You know, they, they have their CW Arrowverse and things like that. So I think we're going to be seeing a, a, a larger emphasis on those core characters. But I also think, and it's quite apparent to me at this point, that we are going to see a lot more social commentary in the mainline DC comics. Now, we did see it um, with the milestone kind of relaunch zero issue that they put out digital only. You know, they, they changed the, the origin story of Static to, you know, he was at a Black Lives Matter protest. Now that's part of his origin story. They did put out the DC digital um, Christian Cooper comic. You know, where it was highlighting injustices as far as uh, police brutality after his uh, his incident in um, in New York. I think it was in I can't remember the day of the park, but in the in the park in New York, we all heard the story where um, the lady was was call, threatening to call the police or trying to call the police because he was black, and uh, that was really unfortunate. So we've we've seen those comic books, but just recently we saw in Batgirl fifty. Batgirl is essentially out there in Black Lives Matter uh, protest, and you know, we saw statues coming down, and she was very in support of that. I think we're going to start seeing all that happen much more within the pages of, of Batman. We just saw, um, you know, in Joker War, it, was, <laughs> it sure felt like in some of those issues that you know that might have been Portland or Chicago with with the the unrest that was going on. And I, I think there's going to be a continued effort to push those type of things forward. I think that's probably 
Um, part of why Daniel Cherry was brought in, not just to be a marketing person, but he has pushed efforts like that in the past with, with some of the companies that work worked with. Um, now, we, we shall say that's just a prediction of mine, but I almost guarantee you that they're putting a focus on digital comics. They're putting a focus on YA children's graphic novels because there is there is growth in the graphic mar mar uh, graphic novel market as far as YA and children. Obviously, they need to go there because they need to grow revenue. I think they feel like d digital is the future of the comic book industry. I also feel that way. We've talked about that numerous time, times on the uh, channel. I don't think it's the immediate future, but it's something that, that you know you, they need to be preparing for. Is, is um, I think digital essentially kind of takes over all print media. To be completely honest, I don't think we're. I don't think that one's around the corner. But they're obviously getting ready, and and, um, and I guarantee you that this has a lot to do with that. Is they're they're changing the direction, take the focus off periodics. And move to some of these new markets in the future, and obviously growing revenue in a, in the only market, the market that is driving growth as far as the comic book industry goes. I don't know what, like I said, what do you all think about this latest uh, round of, of uh, layoffs? You know, Adam Phillips, Stuart Shrek, Fletcher Chu Chong, uh, Sandy Yee, Lisette Ostro, Michelle Wells, and Alex Carr are all gone. There are two more names that we don't know. So within the past year, with these seven plus the two we don't know, that's nine. 14 from the last round, so that's 23, and another four, including Dan Didio himself, that were all let go within the past year. They have suffered 27 layoffs or, or defections at, at DC Comics. I believe all of them were firings, actually. A vast majority of them being senior staff and editorial services. I think they're huge losses. Uh, I am not... I remain hopeful about the, what the future is going to bring, but I also am... And being, uh, I'm going to be honest with myself and what all what this all means. I don't think it's I don't think the the days of DC publishing 75 new comic issues in a month. I don't I don't think we're getting back to that. I think they're they're trimming, trimming, trimming as they expand the line out in other directions and probably bringing in uh, a new creators, maybe creators that have a track record in those markets at the expense of you know your Jeff Johns, your Scott Snyder, your uh, Brian Michael Bendis. You know, uh, uh, who else? Peter Tomasi, Dan Jurgen, some of your senior quality writers that we've all grown to to know and love at DC Comics. That, in my personally, up until the last I don't know six months, twelve months, really elevated them far superior to to Marvel Comics. I don't think that's really the case right now that we're in right now, and I, I don't think that's going to be the case moving forward because I don't think that's their priority. So, like I said, I definitely can't wait to hear from you guys. Another round of layoffs. They're probably going to call it bloody Monday to or bloody Sunday, whatever they're calling it, you know, uh, uh, they're definitely at, a, they're at the bare bones now. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll definitely be talking about this live on the channel on Sunday uh, for comics aficionados. I'm going to try, obviously bring Perch in. I think I'm going to try and bring Gervain, uh, Joe in as well, and maybe see if I can get, um, and get Clownfish TV. Sometimes he'll come in. Uh, if he has the time, he'll come on the channel and talk about stuff like that. So if you want to see Clownfish TV, you know, discuss that here on the channel, let him know. I would appreciate it. Later, y'all. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.